Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> you look so far away from myself. Maybe um, it's better. Um, um, let me just say congratulations to all the winner um, of Global Holcim Regional Award last year and then for the um, Global Holcim Award this year. <clears throat> um, I am feeling very good, but I am tired. Uh, I'm very tired. I am very proud of the Holcim Foundation because all my staff is here today. Almost all, all my staff. Almost all my staff is here today. Um, when you look up to your right, you will see that I have a lot of people sitting here. Um, it is not only myself that is stored. No. No. Okay. no. It's not that. Right. Hello? <coughs> it's better? You hear me? No? 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 Okay. Um, I just I wanted to say that I am very proud that um, Holcim was able to give the opportunity to the people working now in Berlin with me to um, do all this project. I also like to say, I also like, I also like to say, um, uh, what you say uh, in French, joyeux anniversaire, je souhaite à Holcim mille ans, et beaucoup plus de succès. Je voudrais aussi, I would also like to say thank you to the jury um, for uh, making me um, laureate of Global Holcim Award this year. Um, I, it happened to me like a, a dream. Um, when I studied architecture, I didn't care about a word. I didn't know even what it was. Um, I was e even not able to travel. One example was when I was studying in Berlin, uh, everybody used to go uh, to Versailles to visit the castle, this beautiful infrastructure. Or some was going to, uh, to, to New York to visit uh, skylines. But you understand me when I say that. How can I explain this to my people in Burkina Faso, in Gando? What is a high scraper when there is lack of, uh, of school building that you really need to have? This is the capital city of Burkina Faso. On the top, they call it informal. Down, they call it formal. Ladies and gentlemen, the city, the capital city of Ouagadougou, in, uh, uh, the capital city Ouagadougou in Burkina Faso has a big problem. Migration is a big problem. Every year, People are moving from the countryside to the capital city, looking for jobs, looking for better lives. So they just came there and built a house. But we think that this is informal. The city's authorities are struggling to find better housing for them. But there is no way. This size is growing. 
But the solution that they do is to tear down all this uh, structure without taking under account informal economy. These people come to Waga, they don't care about what is. They just came and create even their own jobs. We have a dream in Africa. Burkina Faso has a dream. It is a dream about modern city. It is about a dream about your way of life. We are dreaming to have cities like yours, almost like Lausanne, like Paris, like New York. And we build housing like this one where you need air, air condition to be able to be inside uh, in a country in which more than 60% of the population are neither able to read nor write. In a country which belongs to the poorest in the world. I guess you will say that this is not the best solution for a country like Burkina Faso. But we do it. We do it because we are under pressure. due to the power of your economy, to the power of your policy, to the power of your information policy, you're making countries like Burkina Faso under pressure. Everything that is coming from Africa is called useless. There is no innovation. You let the people Believe that there is only war. Nothing else can happen to Africa. You make us believe that the only thing that exists, it is your society. So we keep dreaming, having it. So we copy your way of life without owning the underground, the background, the cultural background, the technical knowledge. That is what happened. That is how we build just housing like that. It is a superficial copy of what should be. Today, it is not only Europe. China has become a big example in Africa, even in Burkina Faso. For example, a beautiful house, tiles from China, tiles from China, um, a mixture of a roof from China with maybe Mediterranean a style of living, that is what we do. But ladies and gentlemen, this is the reality in Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso. The cities is growing, and the authorities are struggling to provide the inhabitant with needed infrastructure, like water, water supply. Most of people in Ouagadougou need to have these to be able to keep uh, to care drinking water. Ladies and gentlemen, today, in the age of internet, iPhone, that is not acceptable. That is how I came to architecture. I just wanted to learn from, uh, from you and then to bring something back to my people. This is architecture in the rural zone in Burkina Faso that is close to Gando, my home village. People are living in compound like this, this. and then here they, they're growing um, vegetable, millets, they're living from agriculture. In a place like that, how people live together is the security for tomorrow. There is no insurance. The insurance is the community. And people always do things together. Alone, you will not be able to survive. You need your community. And the compound is where generations are living. Grandma, grandpa, and more, and aunt, and uncle, everybody is there together. This is a beautiful compound in Burkina Faso, in Gando. You may ask, um, or wonder how beautiful it is looking. Yes, it's beautiful, but 
people didn't plan that much. They have it inside. There is no need for drawing. They just stand up and call everybody. Come, I'm building my compound. And everybody come. You put things together, you start to build. Then came the time to put the plaster on the building to protect the building against rain. And you just go to the nature, look up for a big, big tree to cut it or to get something from it to protect the, the housing. But as we have heard, nature is not a factory. So that means you cannot have from one on one single tree enough protection, protection means to protect your compound. That's how it looks so beautiful and so uh, um, colorful. But then came the rainy season. Only one reason, the color has disappeared, like you can see. Most of you will be wondering, these Africans that don't respect convention, they're changing the colors of the housing, you may say. But it is not the people that are doing that. It is the nature. And by the way, an African compound is made to grow, please look at here, to grow and shrink when there is a necessity. We say in the village that the compound never died. The mass building material is clay, for sure. This is a big straw, a big, big straw, on the way from Wagadu to Bobo Dioulasso. Inside, you can have peanuts, aspirin to treat your malaria, something to soap to, wait, to, 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 to clean your clothes, cigarette uh, to dress, and you have uh, pasties here, you have wine from Italy, wine from Italy, wine from Spain. I will not recommend you to drink them. They're very cheap, so, that, so people can buy, buy them. What I'm trying to say to you, there is no insurance for this big, beautiful building. When it crash down, people stand together again and rebuild it new, very easily. Community work. Some people from other culture just came and want to do development work. They just came and tried to help these people, giving a new mosque. I am again, I am against this kind of development ad. What you can see is the older mosque. It's called Sudano architecture. It is, it is a way of building, develop in, so, in, uh, in, in the Sahel, in, uh, in Sahara Africa region. And what you can see is that this technology will disappear because people get the concrete house. They don't teach them even how to use concrete. Concrete is something that is sophisticated. And that is what I'm criticizing. But that can be beautiful, what we have. But nobody pay attention to that. Please, when you are in Gandu, never say clay building like that are beautiful to my people. They don't like it. Clay is considered as poor people buildings material. Nobody likes it. But look at, you can see, water is coming from the ground and destroy the housing. Fire is destroying the housing. Typical school buildings in Burkina Faso look like that. These are on the border of the capital city of Ouagadougou. On the countryside. This is almost in Gandu. Not really, but almost in my own home, home village. And this is inside. Ladies and gentlemen, myself, I sat in this class, in a class like this, with more than 150 other people. When you stay, you can touch the ceiling made by corrugated iron. But you can't imagine the temperature inside when they said it is 40 degrees outside. There is not a real place to teach people. But I was lucky because I could attain education. And that's why I am here. And I wanted to change things. 
So I was studying, I stopped to study, and I stopped to do other t- studies because I couldn't imagine that somebody will hire me in, a, in a, an architectural studio. So I, start, I started to make my own results, and I wanted to do, build a school in Gando. That's how I started. But I didn't have the means. I founded an association with some friends who are today here, and yeah, we was lucky to found some, some sponsor that are also some of the most important are also here today, and I'm proud of these people. Uh, I may say half of these people here belong to myself. <laughs> Could you stand up, please? One second, please. Please. Yeah. <laughs> Matthias, please. Yeah. And one on here on the border. From the office. Yeah. So, we, we found an association called Schulbausteine Figando e.V., which is German, very long. I regret, I regret to have done it, um, but I can't change it. And that is h- about how we did. We start to build, and I built uh, this first school. I designed it uh, with the help, assistance of friends, and we built it with the villagers. It is totally made by clay. Of course, we have cement inside, 10%. And these are reverse. I am not going to show you drawing. I will show you the process. And this is how we build. You see this queue. Women, in this manner, young girls or old men are bringing stone to the building site. We use it. It's help safe money to build a basement. Power, labor, people are strong and willing to work. We have it, the help to build. This is the first school after 12 years. This is a very new picture, the building camps without maintenance. That is often a big problem in Burkina Faso. You remember this corrugated iron ceiling? And inside, something different happened. And it worked. But without education, I will never be able to do that. But how you explain drawing to people that are neither able to read nor write, ladies and gentlemen? That is something that I've always been struggling to, to achieve. Making very simple drawings showing flow of ear and very simple section, not to make it complicated. When you make it complicated, you will be keeping staying there and work for that. You have to build it. Um, how to explain techniques to people who are not able to read nor write? What we do most of the time is to build a, a model like you can see, one by one. And I jump on the top and I see, look at, it is working. That is me, Francis. <laughs> and one by one, my people are coming. This is Yida, this is Baba, this is Kabila, uh, this is um, uh, Sumayila, Ismail, and they're coming. But what you cannot see, you can imagine here, look at this guy. You see him on this side, the entire village. Sometimes 1,000 people are looking to you, looking to what happened. No crack, good technology. But nobody will say it to you before. When it breaks down, okay, we've been now and that it will break down. So that is how I'm showing my people how to use technology. After we build a school, the first school, we needed to build housing for teachers because the teachers are coming from far away and they don't want to stay in a village where there is no electricity no drinking water, and no meat. Meat is lux- luxury food. Nobody kills a chicken in a village to eat, but the teacher needs more than food. So you needed to have something in the village to keep them. We wanted to create more than housing for them. And we did it like you can see. Very simple to explain to you. You have to create housing that works. For example, collecting water. Put the water in the canals, 
draw it in a basin somewhere here to keep the water. You can use it in the dry season to grow plants. That's how we work. One again, through sample section, you start. And this is, um, after we build the first school, we build it for 120 children. Three years later, we were forced to plan an extension because we had more than 300 that wanted to attend education. So we started again, and you can see how Baba uh, and Benjamin are building vault, two-layer vault, very complicated technology, but using very primitive materials, the water level and the machete to build a structure like that. The user are always happy. And using every corner of the building. And the people in Gando are really proud because they built it. I came and I started to teach everybody how to do it. And that is the result. One again, without drawing, that would not be possible. I am going to show you how, after we were successful, how we were allowed to introduce clay. Clay floor in a modern building. What I didn't tell you is, when I came and with my friends, and I explained to the village community, I am going to build a school. Everybody really cried because I was happy. Wonderful, Francis is going to build a school for us with his friends. And some weeks later, I explained them we're going to use clay. They didn't trust me. <laughs> what? Did he lose his mind? It is always the German that want to keep us primitive, that don't want us to develop. That's why he want to use clay. We should not let him do that. Clay is for poor people. And a school building is something that is big and from French, we need to have it made by concrete. But I didn't have that money for concrete. But as you saw, we were successful. And then now they allowed us to use this, to use clay in the floor. There is the young people that stand in the queue like that and beat Rudiger can say you that, like that, in queue. Very strong. And then the women came. They are, they are the specialists. They just come and threw out every man. Go away. You know, you don't know what to do. We do it for you. Um, and they started, but they need musicians. Kuyombo, uh, Papa Ali, start to play. And the women are in this position, beating, 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 hours and hours and hours. It's a very demanding work, strong work. But the women are, as I tell you, they're specialists, doing like that. Some are giving water. And inside, they start to polish, like you can see, like you can see, and this is the result. That is how we introduce traditional techniques in the modern building. And it looked like that. Now, when we start a new building, they came and said, what kind of floor, floor you would like to do? I tell and I left. I am here speaking to you. Work is still going on in Ghana. That's how it works. And then we start to be request. Some association come and say, we want you to do our building. This is a high school building in Dano. My very first contract as architect. Very first one. 70,000 euro, he had it. And I had to make drawing from this money. I have to travel to Burkina with this money. I have to use all this money to pay labor and to pay ma material and build a high school. I did it. And that is what it's about using this block made by laterate and cut it like that and to have a wall like that. So we bring it to the side and we start to cut like you can see. And we layer it to make um, walls and to make floors, and since I have to leave now, I have to make models, come back to Europe, uh, to my friend, my sponsor, to look for money, so and I let them do. When I go back under a big mango tree, they welded the structure for roof, and we put them together, and Amede is making the, the, the final cut. 
and it looks like this today. Like this. Here, it was very simple. There was something that is to be, see, to be said here. Um, the German sponsor had that money. He actually said to me to go and do. Everybody was expecting me to do it. And I started to do it since I realized there was a conflict that the German partner didn't know. There was graves on the way. The director no one wanted the children to go there. But in Dano land, the dead is important for uh, the people. When the children don't pass where the ancestors are buried, nothing that they will ever learn will remain in their head. So they have to pass there. But he don't want them to do that because of security reasons. So I went, I asked, they told me, and I just said, okay, I opened the school, so even create outside pl uh, places so that the ancestors can enter the school and sit with the, stu the student. And everybody was happy. And it works. It works. There are simple things you have to care for. And this is the school one again. Cat, ventilation systems, openings, and it works. And then we were requested to do bigger project. This is the national park in Mali. It was a competition, and the project is totally financed by the Akadean, uh, uh, Aga Khan uh, Trust for Culture, or Aga Khan Foundation, um, and uh, they have a lot of development project in, in, in Africa also, and this was part of their project. Um, His Highness, the, who created this trust, has in mind to create a lamp, a pumu, a lamp for the city of Bamako. And we did it. It's a huge park. And using local material, like you can see. But I had to hire than the first time people. Because alone you cannot uh, do a project like that, this size. In 2009, I started to hire people in the office. There was a little more money than in other projects. And was other challenges also to build under rocks like that. And this is the result. This is a, a restaurant and you have the park. Of course we didn't plant the trees. And we work with a lot of other partners um, from South Africa, from Italy, from France, and even from Geneva and from Switzerland. Um, there is a, a big, big project that is now the middle point of interest. And it is a pity to say that there is a crisis in Mali. And uh, after every meeting, they go to this part and to think and to refresh their mind and keep talking about the uh, uh, peace um, um, process in Mali. But the user always are great with the project. When you see that, you know that architect has something to give. Everybody uses it like he wants. This is a sports center. What I want to show you here is not that I'm doing big project. I just wanted to say to you, even in this size, when you talk with the client, and you met the client like uh, um, the Aga Khan Foundation, uh, so you're able to introduce things. I was allowed to cut stones in the city, um, really in the building site, to make um, a wall like that. And there was um, able to hire more than 700 labor, including women, making um, a facade in a Muslim world, like that. So while we was finishing the park, the client, let me call it like that, had an idea to build a little museum, museum in Mopti. Um, but I was struggling with another project, and I was asked to do that. And I asked, how many times do I have to do the project? In how many years are you going to open the project? And they just said to me, in six months. <laughs> I remember that I said to the project manager on the phone, I am not a supermarket. 
uh, because I was struggling for other projects. And uh, somehow they have a, a very tough and good structure. And one other manager called me, explaining me the necessity to do that, that the Aga Khan Foundation is, invest, is putting a lot of infrastructure there. And it is important to do that. And I could do that. But you don't need to do new drawings, Francis. Just take the model of Gandu. But every architect knows that. At the beginning, they say, this is no problem. But you will see why I was... This is a big mosque, protected big mosque. The entire city of Mapti is recovered by water. So they have developed a um, um, more level buildings. And this is, there is no land. That was the first problem. There is a dam. And we had to build on that with clay. But finally, I started to do that. I make it very quick. This is the, the structure in the city. We was able to bring clay in the site. This is clay. And they produce bricks and build it to make a contrast between the old and the new. This is the building from the roadside. What I'd like you to see here, it is a little bit gando, but sophisticated. That is it. And so happened that uh, with the office, I was able to build um, in less than three months, huh? three months, our first museum in Africa. And it looked like that. What is important is um, the client wanted to introduce also another in, uh, innovation. You see this ceiling? Mosque, big mosque in, in, um, in Mali has the problem that people use wood to build them, to build the ceilings. And termite time are destroying them. But where is the wood? There is no wood. And that's why they wanted to show a new way. That is the importance of this project. Even if it is Gandu, a little bit modern, it has a stronger meaning for development. Okay, I have to rush. So, so while doing that, some project come to you, so you don't really like to do it. It's about an opera village. Um, a German artist wanted to, to realize his dream before, let me say that, like before dying, because he was affected by cancer. And I was contacted to do a project very quick. Um, it was a project that is in public interest. And before we started, he just brought container. And we have to build. We didn't find even the site, and we had to start to build to make drawings. But there was no way to escape. And we just, I was forced to do it. And we did it using what we know, transforming it a little bit. And we have a school that is really good working, not far away from Ragadugu. A lot of people can then go and see what we, we, how we build. So, and it's still a building. There's a building process is still happening while I'm talking to you. So I'm coming to our most important project. <coughs> this is a secondary school. Um, this is the site in Gandu. A desert, let me say like that. And that is what has to be there. Since you know about the project, I will talk about the process since I know the type time. Was, it is an idea to form the landscape, to protect, to create a courtyard and protect first the student from the dusty wind, from the wind from the desert. And the idea that I was being talking about, <clears throat> I'd like to attract your attention here. This is a canal. The intention is to bring water in a pipe, the water will drop, drop, drop. It will not go through the building, but the water will run down and grow plants like you can see here. The air will go through, be cool, and be introduced in the building. That is the very simple, simple idea, and we're working on that um, to create spaces that the children can stay 
let me say to you, I, in this project, we have put together all experiences we have achieved in Gando to create something like um, 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 an important sp place to educate or to demonstrate um, passive energy winning and ventilation system. And we just started. We needed to have a wall like this and to make a form and to cast them like that because time was running. But before we make tests, as every building we start, so casting clay like concrete, which is not an easy task. And then we start to build, like you can see. We have a basement. And then how they use the cast, we build one, and then after, a second one, and they put it together, like you can see. They close it, and they can start casting. When it finish, they remove it, and then they can again start casting. And that, at this time, I am in the uh, office in Berlin, working, or going to conferences like that, um, um, trying to, um, yeah, to, 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 to spread the idea to other people. So, but it is also a process, not on drawing, uh, drawing. You start to cast elements from here, you come here, you finish here, and then you have the last one. It is about uh, um, the play of pressure. So you got a crack, so you have in, in the office to react. How can I solve this? And suddenly, we decided, we found a solution, decided to reinforce the last one, to put rebars inside, and it works. Finish. And then rain is coming, rain will destroy this wall, this big, big wall. Uh, what you do is to wait first. <laughs> and then after the rain, it looks like that, in Ouagadougou, in the capital city, it looks like that, but you still wait, that the water run away to Ghana, and then, um, in the village itself, when the next is preparing because things are become wet, so you hurry and you create things like that. It is not Jean, uh, uh, Jean, uh, Christo on, on his wife. <laughs> yeah. But it is Gando. And then, but you say, okay, I, I have protected my building. I'm not unhappy. I just walk and see what happens. The rain has brought everything, and especially filtered sun. So I see, okay, I have more material for the next buildings. So no time to be uh, worried. And then we bring it again in the site and gravel everything. So rain can be destructive. I think nothing is destructive. I am looking, what can I use? And that's what we do. And we protect it using this... Um, Stone from there to build. This is the site for we, we put the holes for passive ventilation and construction cost. This element, let me express it in cement back, since we are talking here because whole sim word. This wall costs two back cement. This little one is 30 centimeters high. It costs one back cement. This is three meter high, costs two back cement. It is 3.2 cubic, cubic meter. And that is how we calculate, how I show to the people the things. And it works. We start to make, uh, um, um, to fill the the outside area, and since we are here, I will ask you to let me show you um, a project that we do in Geneva, and how we work in the office. This picture has been specially put together for you here. Um, it is about the permanent exhibition from the International Red Cross. So it's in different areas with different functions, like you can see. 
Why I'm showing you is this. I came there, we had an idea to use rammed earth. And we keep struggling with the authority. Even the mayor was involved. Mr. Mayu, the museum director, was uh, helpful. And we keep turning in Switzerland. And suddenly, we found a villa in Geneva and made by rammed earth. And everybody was happy. So, and then we start to calculate. Rammed earth is that much, many times expensive than the best concrete in Geneva. So what you do, you keep talking with the client, and then we had an idea to use AMFA. AMFA is a, a beton de chambre, a hamf beton, call it whatever you want. Or some use it to, but you can use it to make clothes or uh, buildings. And that is it. So it will be open in a, a next year in March. So it is, since it is close to your place, you can go and visit it. Um, but I'd like to finish with my very last project. I, I know I, I, it is hot inside. Um, but let me go back to Gando and show you how we really work. Uh, this is a library. Most of the time we have drawing like that. And we start to build things. And I'm happy that Matthias Hefert and his brother, uh, Marcos, are here. They visited the village and wanted to um, help me build the library. And we started, like you can see, and I'm talking. When I'm in the village, I'm talking. I'm running. I'm doing a lot of things. I, am, I feel myself as a director of an orchestra. The worker are the player, and I have to run to keep them together because they're so powerful, so creative, and I have to put them together. And so that is part of this composition. The women bring it to the side, and I cut. I never use professional tools. We create every tool we do when we do the project. So it means when something breaks, the people will not wait for you. They will invent it. That's how I use different tools to cut, and then we use a power. We cut it. When it is clear, we go over to professional production, factory, like you can say. You put it together. Of course, we need concrete. And then it is inside. And it is when we finish, something like that. And is still in process. It takes a lot, lot of time because I will not to call it a reading space. Then we have to think about because you cannot go the, to the village and just say, do. So you need to um, explain how. That's why it takes long. Um, one again, when I start to study, I didn't care about going to work in the office. I just wanted to do things in Gandu. Now I am working. We have some projects even in China. Most important is even in Geneva. Um, um, I have a staff that's working with me. I still consider myself somehow as a bridge between my culture and your culture, the culture of technology, and my culture, culture of maybe not tradition, but a culture that is still in his economic development. Um, I didn't pay too much attention to things. I wanted just to work. And when you here today call that this is architecture, and when this is the reason why I am here to be awarded a uh, Global Holcim Award Gold 2012, then I say you this, I will keep doing it. I don't care. I will fight. And I will greet everybody that is ready to help me. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.